the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Welcome again to this segment of the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard. And again, as usual, You Choose has given us a, it's quite a program today, and, and we want to thank You Choose again for being a partner in providing us uh, with, uh, with shows and also individuals of, of interest. Again, thanks again, You Choose. Well, today, folks, as you note, um, we're now probably in the midst and time of, of again, uh, as usual, celebrating the, the time of Dr. King, uh, a well-respected American, uh, someone we've always respected here uh, in this country. And uh, as usual, I tend to try to bring uh, events and, and, uh, and, and, and interests, if you will, that, that would be of benefit, if you will, to the community and uh, and educate you about what's going on. And, and at times when you start thinking about Dr. King and, and how he left us with the assassination and the, the like, uh, often what would have happened if this man had been living today? And what would he have been saying about some of the events that he had fought so hard for, i.e., you know, save the children and that, and that aspect of it? So this particular show, what we're going to do, we're going to talk to an area that has been around this, this, this country for a number of years, it's called Planned Parenthood. Uh, in many cases, um, I would say this to you, I, I was somewhat preparing myself again for this show, just basically an update. I just went to YouTube and, um, and I noticed that there were over 2,000 videos on Planned Parenthood. I mean, it was very interesting in, in seeing how the, the, the origin of Planned Parenthood, uh, uh, the, the response to Planned Parenthood, it just goes on and on and on. Um, and so what we're going to do in this particular hour, we're going to sort of like break this down and kind of bring it up to date in terms of 2,000. Remember, imagine sitting around looking at 2,000 videos, pros and cons. But the fact But what we're going to do in this particular show, well, I've got two guests here today with me that are going to give us one, some of a historical standpoint. We're going to bring it back to Oregon, more specifically back to Portland in the Portland metropolitan area. And, uh, and so we're fortunate, if you will, to have two people that's going to do that for us. But again, at the end of the day, we want something that gives us some sense of what do we do today uh, with something that has happened to us uh, over the years, if you will, in, the, in, the, in our varying communities. So with that, uh, let me introduce uh, both of my guests today, one in Bill Diaz. Bill has been around for a number of years, and you got, you'll know more about Bill. Uh, he, is, he happens to be the founder of Precious Children of Portland. And uh, he wears many other hats along that particular line, but I think he's developed accordingly. But we're going to know a little bit more about uh, where's Bill today, uh, what brought him into in this issue, and, uh, and just give us a good update. And then the other person who we're fortunate to have is, is Lori Porter. She's Parents' Rights in Education. And, uh, and that's kind of like a pro the progressive way of, of saying that it's bringing it up to date and what's happening within these areas and the concerns, if you will, of, of, of parents today. And I might add also, too, because, again, we're talking about uh, Dr. King and, and some of his issues and whatever, uh, he, he, a quote that I've always used on my show was that uh, he'd made a quote. He made, he's, made, he's made a number of quotes, but this one has always been of interest to me. And it says that the, and I'll just add another person, but during that particular time, he, he talked about a male, but I'm going to ask the female also, too. But the quote goes this way, the ultimate measure of a man or woman is not where he or she stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands at times of challenge and controversy. And right up front with this, it depicts the two people that I have here with me today. I mean, who would, who, who today would stand up uh, during our times of recession and, and the like, of tough times and the like? Most people tend to just sit back and uh, enjoy themselves and, and uh, just look the other way of concerns. But, I will say this, even as, as an introduction, uh, just briefly, uh, my, 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 my background, if you will, of, of Portland Planned Parenthood, I can, just thinking about the building that was built on Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard, just to show you how complex this, this issue can be. Uh, on one hand, Bill was trying to educate, Bill Diaz was trying to educate the public about uh, what this issue was all about. And I was, uh, he's been on the show before, and I was always concerned about here we are in the African-American community and looking at the few number of people 
the, the masses of people that were there uh, basically demonstrating on Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard and the few African Americans that actually participated mm -hmm. uh, in that effort and, and uh, that's a concern. Uh, the other concern was that when the property was sold, I thought that was interesting also a piece, it just so happened that an African American owned the property and, um, and they sold it to this issue. Mm -hmm. I can always also remember that I called up Planned Parenthood and suggested that they not that they not locate on Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard. Recognize this is a free country, but at least locate it in another street as opposed to Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard. Naturally, I got no respect. I got no no response to that particular issue. That really concerned me, folks. And as you as you get in as we get into um, the comments from both of these individuals, you'll understand what my concerns are too. But I always also always challenge. Uh, the African American community. This is a very serious problem situation. As you know, we've gone through an era, and I've made this statement before: babies having babies, and uh, they are really we're really having some tough times in terms of trying to see if we can respect, if you will, the life, if you will, because that's our future, and uh, we're having some tough times. But uh, but so stick with me on that piece, okay? Two. All right. So why don't we just go on and start, uh, uh, Bill? Welcome again. Thank you, Bruce. Always a always a pleasure to have you on. Likewise, sir. And we want to we want to commend you and and thank you from the community and this country. Thank you. And the mothers and fathers for what you've done with thank reference you. to saving the children. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. All right, Bill. Well, why don't you just start off just briefly? With how did Bill get into this thing? Just for the benefit of those those folks who are watching now for the first time that are, that, are, that, are, that now they've seen you. Sure. Yeah. A lot of people don't seem to know a lot about uh, Planned Parenthood or or what's happened the last six years in in town. And I have to actually go back a little bit um, uh, before that. Back in the um, 70s, they actually tried to build another Planned Parenthood here, and one of the pastors from uh, one of the Church of God in Christ Church actually was able to rev up the neighborhood and they did not put it in here but um but basically over the last few decades that that wasn't good enough for planned parenthood they wanted to get one one in here so um so in 2006 they started to work pretty hard on um uh, with uh with portland development commission and even actually a little bit before then and they were able to convince uh, portland development commission in the start of 2007 to, uh, to give them land uh, to build the Planned Parenthood. Now, um, I went to the two hearings that Portland Development Commission had on this. One was in March of 2007, the other one was in April of 2007. And uh, Pastor W.G. Hardy from Highland Christian was there. Mm -hmm. um, there was uh, uh, pastors from, from other churches also. How did he react? How did Pastor Hardy? He's well, he was very upset about it, yeah. too. Um, he, he came from an ice large family. He has at least one brother who's a pastor. His sister's very involved. Uh, you're talking about the, the father church. or the son? You're talking about the... Uh, I'm talking about the son in, in terms of his generation. Right, that right. One. Okay, and okay. His brother's um, actually a pastor uh, not too far from here, just right over on Beach Street right. at a Church of God in Christ. And I know his sister uh, is very involved in the uh, in the church community also, at least the three of them at least. So. And again, for the benefit of the viewing mm -hmm. audience here, who founded the Planned Parenthood? I'm, I'm familiar with that. Well, that's that's a good one. It's Margaret Sanger, and just yeah. around 100 years ago she did. A lot of people think that uh, Planned Parenthood was just a new thing that came along with the hippie generation right. with the pill and abortion and what have you like that. But um, what happened in the 1800s, at the end of the 1800s, uh, the, probably the biggest event was is that the... Uh, that um, that blacks were no longer able to be enslaved, and then gradually they got voting rights. A lot of people think that uh, they got voting rights automatically when uh, when the Civil War was ended, but but it actually took quite a long time, and there was quite a few people really concerned that there was too many blacks around, and then right around that time a lot of Irish came over. There was the big potato famine you know, right around the time of the Civil War. And then toward the end of the 19th century, there was a huge, huge influx of Italians and then quite a few Asians. So people were upset with the blacks, they were upset with the Irish people, they were upset with the Asians and the Italians. Some Jewish people. Oh, and the Jewish people also. So the um, there wasn't quite the big influx right, of them, though, right, right. as there were with the other. So um, um, the Ku Klux Klan kind of got a... Uh, 
a big boost, you know, uh, around 100 years ago, right around 1915. And uh, people such as uh, Mr. Gamble of Procter & Gamble and other really rich people, um, you know, did not want to see, you know, the blacks and the Asians and the Italians around. And um, they, of course, wanted to hide behind it a little bit. You know, they don't want to, you, you don't want to be a businessman and saying, you know, I don't like these poor immigrants. You know, I don't like, I don't like at that time they'd say the Negro people. That won't look good for their business. So they were able to give Margaret Sanger uh, money to do her work. And her first center for birth control was put in Harlem. All right. Um, and again, it was just around 100 years ago she did that. It was right around 1920 to, to limit the uh, number of blacks coming into the world. And she went on and worked with Mr. Gamble in 1930. She even started the Negro Project and started to put more um, of the centers into the South. Now, a lot of people recognized what she was doing. But unfortunately, she was able to convince a lot of the people in the black community that having less children was, was better. Uh, was better for them and, and to not have so many of, of the blacks around. But they wouldn't talk about the other uh, other ethnic groups, if you will, whites and, uh, and, the, and the others, right? It wasn't well, as easy, if you will, working in those communities? Well, she started to do it other things. I know my family came from southern Colorado, right. where there was a, a lot of the, the Mexicans and Italians came to work in the mines. Mm -hmm. And uh, Rockefeller, another one of the rich people back then, also teamed up with <laughs> with Margaret Sanger. I know my grandmother was told that she shouldn't have any more children and was put under a lot of pressure to do it. And a lot of uh, blacks in the southeast and a lot of Italians in different parts of the country were, ster were sterilized, you know, against their, um, against their wishes and, and they weren't even uh, aware of it. And there's a very good movie that all the people, all the viewers should get, whatever side of Planned Parenthood they're on, I and mean, if they think abortion's the greatest thing since sliced bread, or mm -hmm. if you know if they are, or I think most of your views are say, well, you know, there's maybe two sides of abortion, and you know, giving these little girls all this birth mm -hmm. control, and they should go look at Mafia 21, mm -hmm. and it really goes through the history mm -hmm. uh, of of Planned Parenthood, especially of Margaret Sanger, but she belonged to the American Eugenics Society, and when she started and eugenics, what does eugenics? You, mean? Eugenics what is mean? is a um, way to control races. In other words, you pur purposely try to control races. As Margaret Singer would say, more of the fit, less of the unfit. And I mentioned before, her unfit was quite a large list. There was the Negro people, the Mexican people, people from the Mediterranean region, and the, and the um, Asians. And to this day, um, quite a few more blacks and Latinos do get uh, uh, unfortunately mutilated in the womb. Uh, when we were starting our work, so it was uh, an extermination process. It right? is, yeah. In two thousand, in two thousand eight, uh, Planned Parenthood has this research ar arm called the Allen Guttmacher, and um, it was named after the second founder of Plan, uh, the second uh, president of Planned Parenthood, after Margaret Sanger, who is also very big in the eugenic societies around the world. And the, the center is named after him, and they do research on, on who's getting killed by abortion. And at that time, they reported that almost 500% more blacks are killed in the womb, and almost 300% more Hispanics are killed in the womb mm -hmm. than white babies. And um, recently in New York City, they've released things is that more black babies are killed in the womb than are allowed to be born in New York City. Right. So well, it's look, really sad. I know we can, we, I mm -hmm. we can probably spend about a week or so on this. this yes. But mm -hmm. let's bring it back to Portland, to yes. Portland here. What, what, what's the history of Portland as it relates to Planned Parenthood? Well, I mentioned the involved? one thing in the, in the 70s where they had a, some good luck of, of not of having, of, of, of having Portland not come in here. But then Portland did, uh, Planned Parenthood did set up a pretty big center in southeast Portland mm -hmm. where they're pretty much doing abortions there around the clock. Is uh, it still there? It's still there. Um, and then... And then in 2006, they announced in their annual report that their goal was to put a state-of-the-art surges center to increase access to abortion. You know, they didn't try to disguise it under women's health. And the people of Planned Parenthood, uh, the people of Portland Development Commission, uh, such as Mr. Rosenbaum and Mr. Wilhite, they even made jokes about it. Um, only one lady 
voted against it, uh, um, who was on the commission, she said, you know, it looks like a lot of people are, are against abortion. Could you set up your center and not do abortion? And of course, for Planned Parenthood, you know, that'd be mm -hmm. like asking, mm -hmm. you know, a faithful um, churchgoer not to go to church. I mean, abortion is just such a huge part of their their business. So um, that was a push. That's quite oh, a push. Oh, it was. It was. PDC, yes, it was in PDC. Um, um, you know, I mentioned Mr. Rosenbaum and Mr. Wilhite um, and Bruce, who was the head of it. They they just were gaggly eyed and and. Uh, you said Bruce, and then that might. No, no, this other Bruce. Bruce. I can't think of his <laughs> name. Was it, was it we're just. I can't think of his last name. Anymore. They were just um, salivating actually at Planned Parenthood. They were just so tickled. Um, you know, they were hugging all the Planned Parenthood employees. I really think the um, having the hearings was like a sham. Because they really weren't interested in it. Well, it's my understanding as I mm -hmm. looked at some of that research, they're a very mm -hmm. powerful group. It's like a billion dollar operation. It is. It is and a billion dollars funded operation. Funded by the government they do. in some cases. They do. They get a, a, a over a million dollars a day from the government. In fact, they get near five, uh, half a billion dollars a year from the um, the government, uh, you know, around $500 million. Mm -hmm. But they yeah. tout the fact that it's, it's sort of a health situation for women, and that's, that's an, again, that's the other lobby. Well, point but people have make. to look at that. But but last need. year it came out that they were doing mammograms, but people called all around the country uh -huh. and to try to find a Planned Parenthood that did mammograms, and there wasn't one. So finally, uh, Miss Richards, um, the head of Planned Parenthood, mentioned that they do not not do mammograms. Um, they're basically in the in the sex business. They try to get little kids involved with sex. Now, I teach junior high and high school kids, and it's hard for a lot of them to even bring a pencil to class. So to try to teach kids to use contraceptives properly, I mean, even besides just the the immoral the immorality of all that, and just the dangers to their little bodies, but. Um, most of the kids don't do well with the contraceptives, and Planned Parenthood even reports that half the kids having sex have a venereal disease. So mm -hmm. where do they go get that? They'll go get treatment. Planned Parenthood hands out these cards at school, and they only charge, I don't know, it was either like 30 or $50 to get to test it, so they make money there. And then not only do the kids have to pay, but the government also has to well, Bill, pay look, a lot of money. Let's get in this other part. You were a teacher. You are a teacher, right? You're still a teacher at the um, Portland Public School I, System? I am, uh, at least to, to today, today of... Today of, of December 15th, I still am a teacher at Portland still Public Schools. And what were you teaching in Portland? I, I, was, teaching Benson, math, right? I was teaching at ben Benson Polytechnic High School. I was teaching computer science. I was teaching mathematics. I also taught some computer technology and drafting also. And since you, it, it was somewhat unique because you were the only one, is my understanding, a very rare breed. Of well, for one thing, I, um, a few years ago, there was a big push to get dual credit for uh, for in the high schools around right. the state right. um, so students could take computer science and get college credit and get high school credit and I was the only one approved for and it. And Intel sitting up here, right? You're, right. Talking, you're talking about a job maker. It is and I and I actually was an engineer at Intel. I was a project manager there wow. Wow. Uh, um, before I came well, now, to Tell me this now. What's mm -hmm. this now? You're gone. What's, what's this all about? Um, and on March, on March 19th, the uh, the principal and a vice principal and a, um, a, a head official in the Human Resources Department. Right. He was one of the directors uh, in Human Resources, and the Portland police came and took me out of the classroom. Why so, was this so? I mean, what, what happened? What, what did you do? Well, I wasn't, because people said, well, what was the crime? And there wasn't a crime. I mean, there's a lot of teachers, unfortunately, at Benson and other places that have had you know sex with children, and they don't even get dismissed. So here I was trying to promote purity, <laughs> And uh, what the, to, to answer your question, I don't want to get off on it, is in the fall um, that Planned Parenthood came into my classroom, which I didn't even know they were coming. I heard a group called Teenage Outreach you Program. You weren't was alerted coming. at all. Well, no, I just heard a group called Teenage Outreach Program was coming. Okay. So when they came into the room, I said, could I see some ID, which is our standard protocol? And it said, we're from Planned Parenthood. And I said, well, could you step outside a second? The principal ran down, you know, like Shakespeare said, Hal has no fury is a woman's scorn. And yeah. you know, I thought she was going to smack me. And she said, you need to go back in there with him. I said, you know, I'd rather not. Uh, and I wish you would give me some religious accommodation. She says, no, you need to get back in there. And I s so I thought I took the most peaceful. She I said, knew you. And she, she's oh, known yeah, you. Yeah, well, she had given me actually a lot of trouble the year before. And what's her name? What was this woman? Well, her, her name's Carol Campbell. She's but the principal, she was, present principal. Well, no, actually, she got a promotion after all that, and she's over at Grant now. 
Okay. And, uh, but there's actually two other principals before then. There was Susan Shank and Steve Olzak, who also tried to give me trouble. And I had to bring in different lawyers in the union. And we, and we finally, you know, ever since 2007, it, it's just been a pain. They told me that I could not even say I was a teacher if I was in public. Which Well, what was the union at this point in time? Well, they've the been union? helping. They, they, they have been helping Oh, they, they, they've been in a, a, bi a big help. Um, I think they were just overwhelmed with it. I mean, um, we would file a grievance, and they would give me another reprimand. And we'd file a grievance, and they'd give us another reprimand. So how did they get to this point where you, all of a sudden you're not going to be able to teach anymore? Well, I, I think point? it goes all the way up. I, I think just about the you're whole— going to court? No, I, think, I think the board, the board is very—it's um, it's just like the PDC board, the right. Portland Public School Board— is again just real big fans of Planned Parenthood. You know, I think, I think they follow. Uh, again, this is an opinion, but I think they follow the eugenics of Planned right. Parenthood. They want to see more of the fit and less of the unfit. Where I think as a good teacher, or for that matter, anyone, in the school system is you should teach everyone, and you should teach them the best you can. Um, and so this past year, believe it or not, I was observed almost 40 times by either um, an HR official. Planned Parenthood managers even came in to observe me, and the principal and the vice principal. And that's on call for most teachers might get observed, you know, maybe two, three, maybe possibly four times. Um, they also told me I couldn't ever use any religious expressions. I couldn't say, like, bless you or God bless you, and uh, which was kind of ironic because the principal and the superintendent and, and other officials have, have, from time to time, have told people to pray or have said, uh, you know, you should look upon your blessings. Um, it was it was just really one one thing after another. And in November 14th, just a few weeks ago, there was a public hearing, and uh, the the gentleman who was working for Portland Public Schools who heard it just went ahead to go ahead and dismiss me. So tomorrow, actually, December 16th, could be my you know, my last good. last day. Well, tell me while you were teaching and whatever. <clears throat> Were you spending an ordinary amount of over over time, if you will, talking about the whole issue of Planned Parenthood? Well, no, I, I was I was teaching. No, nature? I was teaching technical classes, and every so often, something comes up. Right. You know, sometimes a child would say, "You know, I saw you the other day," or I would speak right. in some of their churches, right. and my usual response was, "Well, you know, catch me on the side with that." And as a teacher, we have a lot of personal um, conversations right, right, with right, students, right, right, right. but I mean, it was rare it ever came up, you know, in, in the classroom. I mean, I had an agenda to teach with, you know, uh, the main class I taught at Benson over the years was freshman electronics. Mm -hmm. And boy, we had a, you know, we went from house wiring to a little continuity tester, um, you know, to a steady hand game, to a battery project, and to quite a, quite a bit of book work. So, mm -hmm. There really wasn't time to discuss it. Another you know? point in thinking about again, <clears throat> Dr. King is my understanding that um, Dr. King's niece. Oh yes. Uh, had, talk a little bit about that. Oh yes, Dr. King's niece was extremely upset. Did she come here? Uh, she did. In fact, she came in 2007, and she, when it was still um, a grass lot owned by uh, Portland Development Commission and one other private party who you had mentioned earlier, uh, but she actually spoke at Benson. Um, on uh, April 20th, 2007. And, spoke uh, at Benson. At, spoke at Benson in the night. Uh, the public can rent rent the schools. Right, right, right. It's called civil use of buildings. Okay. And so she spoke to a, to a pretty good-sized crowd that night um, and went over a little bit of history with things. And the one thing I think it's good for every everyone to know here is that she said, you know, this is ground zero. Um, for trying to, you know, clean up a lot of the filth in the country and to try to make uh, protection of the life in the womb a priority. Um, I think, I don't think a lot of people realize the trouble our city's in. If we have someone from the media who generally likes filth, you know, I mean, you, you can go to CBS, NBC, any of those stations, Fox, and see one filthy show after another. And you have, the, Dan Rather came to Portland a few years back and did a show called Pornland, okay? And Portland actually has, I think it's one of the highest, if not the highest centers of human trafficking. Um, you know, Sandy's a wreck. Uh, you go to Southeast Portland, wow. along Foster, it's a wreck. 82nd's wow. seconds wreck, and there's, there's filth all over. So Dr. Alveda King, and I mean, it's all tied in, you know, to, to abortion and discrimination 
and you know uh, not only against races but especially amongst the young people you know the Planned Parenthood gets these little kids involved with sex when they're early and it just really destroys a child's self-esteem you'll probably hear some more of that from Lori who's also a teacher and it was funny ten years ago at Benson we had a counseling program for kids who had been involved with sex to help you know counsel them and kind of get their self-esteem back and now they have Planned Parenthood and they came to to all the schools with high minorities, they came to Jefferson, they came to Madison, Roosevelt, and Benson. Was that um, an open bid process in, in regards to? Well, I, I don't ever, I don't know quite quite the history of it. I think Planned Parenthood really pushed hard for those schools. Again, they really try to you know put their their uh, classes in there. I, you know, I don't think too many people at Lincoln would be very uh, happy if they found out Planned Parenthood was taking the kids out. Um, of their classes without their parents knowledge and playing these silly games with them and you know um, giving them these um, sexual surveys that they paid the kids and you know, they paid the kids thirty dollars to take these sexual surveys that they that they said they would never use their names but you know I don't know about that I mean I I, I think once Planned Parenthood has that kid's name and has their sexual past I think they would use it against you know, the child. You know, another point I would, I would bring out, I noticed when, as I was looking through some of those videos, mm -hmm. I, the, the first sitting president uh, mm -hmm. has, has endorsed the, uh, the whole issue of Planned Parenthood, and that's uh, our, pr our present president, Obama. It, it, it is Obama. sad. In fact, I, he's, I and really, if he's the only president, I, I went to the, uh, he's, who's ever spoken at the Planned Parenthood National Convention. Right. And I guess the other thing that I mm -hmm. saw in some of those videos, and by the mm -hmm. way, folks, I would, would really go go and check it out. Check out that YouTube, and just all you do mm -hmm. is hit in Planned Parenthood, and you get a whole range of whatever. They also mentioned the fact that um, uh, that Reverend ja Jesse Jackson also had uh, supported Planned Parenthood when he was running for president. He did, Prior but to that, he, he, was, he, was, he wasn't well, for it. Well, his, his story's interesting. But the point, he, I, but the point uh, I'm making is that uh, Planned Parenthood had a, had a way of going to black ministers, yes. always trying to give them monies, and, if you will, right. et cetera, for power. Mm. And uh, that was the thing that I'd gotten out of that, to a certain degree. Yes. That, you know, because, you know, cause, because in all due respect, when you, when you think about President Obama, uh, mm -hmm. Being the first African American president in this country, mm -hmm. uh, you know that that was something of to, be, to have been very proud of. Oh yes, uh, yes around yeah. the country, mm -hmm. uh, around the whatever, and and uh, and then all of a sudden now he's running. It's going to give me a different sense, a feel about about right. the support now. You know what I mean? Because he was, you know, look re really looking towards the leadership aspect of right. it, and, and now all of a sudden you hear about this piece, and he and he's on, he's in those YouTubes. I'd, I'd figure about right. this. 60 or 70. Well, 70 actually, times. the president of Planned Parenthood for the United States took time off for a few days to campaign for him. And in one of their annual reports from a few years ago, they have a big picture of her with, with President Obama on one page. And then the next page has two little kids playing with a, a false you-know-what and putting a condom on yeah. it. So it's pretty dis well, in all due respect, too disgusting in pictures. In all due respect, there. we get used quite a bit. You know, and, mm -hmm. I, and I'm still trying to yeah. respect the, the president because, oh, yes. of, because of his statue. But I, oh, yes, you always I, have I, to respect I've, I've the office. I've got a little bit more concern now in terms right. of what, what, what did represent. Well, it just shows the uh, the political pressure of, yeah, that's what I, that's, uh, of, of Planned that's Parenthood. That's what I was trying to make and, up, you know. Oh, and Senator Merkley here, um, you know, uh, if... Uh, and also the governor, um, they, they they think quite a bit of and the Planned Clintons, Parenthood. And the Clintons are very much involved in the process, yes. too. Right. But look, we're going to take a short break. And um, as you can see, this is going to be very involved. We're going to take a short break, and then we're going to bring Lori in. And, okay. And then we're going to start talking about the, this next 30 minutes, trying to figure out what do we do about this. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, s folks, stick with us. We'll be right back. You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend.
Okay, welcome back again to this segment of the Oregon Voters Digest. And again, as I indicated before, uh, and I'll make this statement again, we're talking about Dr. King and how do we celebrate Dr. King. Often it's a sort of a festive kind of a moment. Uh, you, many of you are being asked for monies and things of that nature, but I think that what we need to be doing is that this man had a legacy, and he, and he meant something when he was living, and he, and he died for it, if you will, trying to help people in the light. And again, save the children was one of his. It was his, one of his top priorities, if you will. And again, as I say, my show today is dedicated to two people who are who are representing uh, his his, uh, his 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 history, if you will, and what he meant, if you will, to this country. And I started off again. And I'll make a statement again too, because this is our second person. And that was uh, he made a quote: "The ultimate measure of a man or woman is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he or she stands at the time of challenge." And, con and controversy. Well, we spoke to the he part, the first part, through, through Bill, and now we're gonna we're gonna spend some time with Lori Porter, and now we're gonna be talking about solutions, the concerns, and where do we go from here? What can you do, if you will? And by the way, we also invite the Planned Parenthood folks, as I've done every time that I've talked to them, even when Bill was here. But naturally, no one calls. I've called them, but they are not willing to come on and just share with us uh, just what their rationale and their justification for doing what they're doing. We're giving them the opportunity to speak up, okay? All right, with that, Lori, how you doing? Good, thank good, you. Good, good. Thanks for being here. You're welcome. And thanks for your work, by the way. I, let me let me read your piece. I, I noticed when you sent me a piece, you made a you made a statement here. I thought it was good. Parents' rights in education. That's that heading that you see under a name. Parents' rights in education exist in order to provide accurate information, effective tools, and strategic support to parents, school officials, and community members who have reason for concern about comprehensive sectorality education in Oregon public schools, grades K through 12. What are you, what are you, what are you saying? What are you doing? Well, we're a grassroots organization. And um, as a teacher, about four years ago, I became uh, alerted to the curriculum, the trainings, the programs, the messages that were out there to, to children that teachers were being asked to, districts were being asked to, to use, and it was very shocking and concerning for me. And so a number of uh, like-minded people came together and we uh, started to research and connect the dots on who was involved in this curriculum and these programs, and Planned Parenthood is definitely one of, one of the key players. And it can be very daunting and overwhelming and intimidating, uh, especially for parents who they're busy, they're living their lives, and they, you know, they might have a concern they might even know what to be concerned about. And so we've done a lot of the research. We have some some input from a lawyer that has helped us to know mm. what your legal rights are as a parent. And sometimes you just need a little uh, guidance uh, to know where to, to make your first step on how do you approach a school board? How do you find out what the curriculum is mm. really all about? And once you find out, what do you do? Mm. So, so we do some of the back work for parents and concerned citizens because we know they're busy. Mm -hmm. well, well, tell me this now. Uh, are we talking about Northeast Portland and the black community? Where, 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 you know, what, 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 are, what are you representing? Well, I, um, we, are, we target where? all of Oregon. Okay. Um, I do have some information about more locally this area, but there are concerned parents uh, across the state, especially with the, the comprehensive K through 12 okay. uh, sex ed curriculum that is being promoted by the Oregon Department of Education. And um, so we, we try to bring tools and support because a lot of the things that are being Portland's dealing with, other communities around the state are dealing with just as well. Okay, so. I've got a question here. Mm -hmm. Explain and give examples of how the lines between healthcare and education in Oregon K-12 public schools are blurring. Why should parents, guardians care about this? What recent Oregon legislation is supporting this? Well, parents should care, and it doesn't matter. Our, our premise is it doesn't matter what your political background is, your religious preference, what you think about sex education, birth control, and even school-based health centers. I have my own opinion about some of those things, but the bottom line is you're right as parents in determining what your kid learns about sex and um, what kind of resources are presented to them. So the lines are blurring uh, pretty rapidly. There is this abstinence education was defunded and there's millions of dollars being poured in 
to promote curriculum such as um, the top program in Portland, which I can talk about later. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> that money is coming in quickly. There's legislative support that's coming. There's bills that are being passed to support the blurring of the lines between health and education. That would mean, you, for example, you may send your child to school, and if they have questions about their sexual identity, if they have, um, if they have, want to find out about birth control, for birth control and contraception, reproductive services, abortion included, mm -hmm. uh, a, a school-based health center, for example, is obligated to tell the child where they would, could go to get um, services. Mm -hmm. It might be provided at the school-based health center, it might not be, but they're obligated to, to tell this child um, where they could access that. So more and more effort is being placed on, and, and health, when you say the word health, mm -hmm. we usually think of, you know, our, what we eat and our, but health could mean, mean dental care, it could mean emotional health, it could mean physical health, reproductive health, and I, I feel for teachers because, um, you know, I, as a teacher, when I have a student, my students come to my school, to, and I come to my classroom, I don't want to be making health care kind of decisions or recommendations to them. To them, it, I feel like that crosses the line, mm -hmm. uh, and that's that's a decision that that parents should be a part of. When did you get involved in this whole process? When when did when did, mm -hmm. when, did when did that happen to you? Well, I got involved um, about four and a half years ago. Mm -hmm. I in my school district, I asked to be a part of a sex ed curriculum review committee where you're looking at different sex ed curriculum. And you're thinking about your community and their values, and you're getting input from various players, and you're looking at different types of curriculum that's presented. And so we got curriculum from the Oregon Department of Education, and as our committee was looking at that and looking at what the law was around that, I got very concerned. I got very concerned about um, the, the trainings that kids were going to. I got concerned about the curriculum much of it, not all of it, but much of it from Planned Parenthood, and and where the parents' roles, the parents' rights were being, you know, negated oftentimes, mm -hmm. and the kids were being empowered, which I'm all for empowering students, but when you come, when it comes to a controversial subject like sex mm -hmm. and health care, um, to me, that's not the role of the teacher, that's the role of of the mm -hmm. parent to make the final decision. So that's what that's what got this okay. ball rolling for me. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, Bill, and I'm gonna bring you in now on this sure. particular subject. Mm -hmm. You've been in the school system how long? Um, well, off and on ever since the uh, mid '70s. Okay, mm -hmm. and then naturally, you know, you went to the school system at point in time. I did. Yes. Uh, yeah. How do you compare? And I did too. And I'm uh -huh. trying to compare. What what was sex education? Let's say when you were going to school. Right. And then what was sex education when you end the school and then bring it up to date? See, Lori's kind of like laying it out. Hey, sure. she just got in, but all of a sudden it's an issue. Well, Real quick, well, when I first started in the 70s, it was ba some basic... But what about you? Oh, what, for about myself. You? What happened to you? Um, how, how, how did they approach you? That, it was know, just some very, very basic biology. Right, right. You know, because um, we had health and it, and it, You had to take a subject, remember? That was well, healthy. Well, I didn't health have... Education. My particular school didn't have the health, but we had... Yeah. But it was part of biology. Yeah, right. You know, and they would go over go over it and sometimes in grade school they would go over some items but they they uh, were mainly showing how a reproductive system worked not all the things you do to mess up a reproductive right, system right, right, okay right, right. okay mm -hmm. well now okay bringing this up to date i mean how were they how was it being taught uh, when you were in school now bringing it up to date you know you've been doing this other issue with reference to well now it's taught quite a bit different in fact reproduction it's kind of funny they use that word for it because they're telling, almost teaching kids about how to not to be reproductive. And they're just, um, I, I, just really, I think, teaching kids how to be promiscuous. Mm -hmm. uh, they're trying to um, really squash down any natural boundaries uh, children have. Um, the stuff that Planned Parenthood has, you know, tells kids, you know, what, there's no issue of sleeping around. Mm -hmm. There's no issue of trying this and trying that. Um, they go through all this terminology i mean i was just looking at her list right now i mean 
I've been married for 35 years. I, I have children, so I, I, I think I know how sex works. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't know a lot of those terms or, or what those devices are for. And, mm -hmm. and I think it's just so sad they're doing that for the kids. It just wrecks their heart. And, and I guess one other thing yeah. from, a, from teaching is um, if you look at the grades or the, or the drug abuse for kids who have, who have been um, you know, involved with sex, uh, it, it's, it highly correlates. Their grades go down a lot. And to kind of cover up that pain, the kids get into a lot of drugs. Laura, can you take it from there? So to speak? Yeah, I just wanted to add that um, the 2012 there were 2000 in 2012 there were revisions made to Oregon's sex ed laws, the administrative rules, and um, the sexuality specialist Brad Victor from the Department of Education touted that these were the most progressive, push the envelope type of uh, laws across the country. Mm -hmm. And so no longer is it the biology of sex. Mm -hmm. um, I have to look at my notes here, but the emphasis is around. So when, when you think of sex ed mm -hmm. from our generation, right. it's a little different. Now, discussions around relationships, gender roles, identity, ways to, ways to express affection, what makes for a healthy relationship, which uh, define healthy, depends on the relationship that you're, you know, how what makes for a healthy relationship uh, discussions around um, sexual pleasure um, those are things and we're talking k through 12 comprehensive sex education so it's it's really beyond the the biology and some of the basics around sex education and that's where val you know a, the values and the of the diverse community mm -hmm, mm -hmm. are really if you're not careful they're going to be squelched, and that's where parents and guardians really need to be looking at the curriculum. You know, that's I, happening. I asked both of you this to, to kind of give, give us sort of a flow of how we got to this particular point. Mm -hmm. And then you've got these uh, these AIDS, uh, these issues, um, the, these other entities that tend to promote it even more. And I'm talking about the entire media. I'm talking about movies. I'm talking about visuals now. You know what I mean? I mean, nowadays they put auras on movies, right? And sex is, I mean, it's open. I mean, at one point in time, you, they would use the, they would have sex on late movies, late hours. Now it's right, I mean, it's 24-7. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, and kids have access to that, right? right? Mm -hmm. And like, typically, like most kids will tend to want to deal with the R's, the R ratings as opposed to the PG. Now, the top program, if I could. Talk to me. The top program is something that Portland Public Schools has, Salem Kaiser has, and last night I did a lot of research about yes. um, a little bit more digging into that. And there, there are activities that that program is asking students to um, talk about the advantages and the disadvantages of being male or female, um, encourage them to think of sexuality broadly, also to, to imagine their ideal romantic partner so closing their minds and thinking about what would what would they do, what how would it feel, and then having a this conversation. This is in the classroom. Yes. It, well, it could be in the classroom. Top program could be after school right, program okay, as well. Okay. So it depends on what the school um, ch tends to do. But um, having candid discussions about um, that, what, how it feels to be rom romantically uh, attracted to someone. Know, thinking about the movies and how and then also how they display sexuality so just some really open discussions with mixed gender class you know students mm -hmm. which um i would be a little uncomfortable i'd be quite uncomfortable mm -hmm. with uh, talking to students about that um too too deeply and then within that curriculum as i was going along reading through it um, it says that if a teacher is uncomfortable, we can always invite a professional health educator or family planning educator in, uh, Planned Parenthood affiliate or whatnot, to come in and do the lesson for the kids. So um, in addition, within this curriculum, it's talking about how to find uh, birth control, contraception, and how you can go to a Planned Parenthood um, clinic and get that. So, so these programs aren't just talking about the basics, but they're actually guiding kids on how to talk openly, kind of lowering some of their um, natural inhibitions to, you know, talking about their um, their feelings about it versus just the realities of, 
of some of the more general things when it comes to science. We're getting into discussion now. We, we've probably got about another 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. I'll have to talk, let's talk about solutions now. Yes. What should we do and where should we go? Bill and, and both of you and you. Bill, uh, where should we go? What, what, what do you do about the issue that you, in all due respect, they're getting ready to let you go to school. I mean, get me mm -hmm. out of school. I mean, and how do we, what do we do? What, what do we get to the public? What well, do you say to the public? Well, let's, let's break it down uh, into a few areas. One is, um, let's go back to the churches. You know, you mentioned, uh, uh, and his full name is Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., yes. who was actually a Baptist preacher. And um, I think a lot of the faiths, there are a lot of people of faith there, and they're certainly not against sex. N uh, no more than a conservationist is against how something is in nature. But they want to see a preserve where, you know, it's used for bonding and it's used for babies. Mm -hmm. um, and, and for a number of years, um, uh, across all races and religions, people saw the value and the beauty of it, but it's such a strong force that can also also be misused. So that's what I think it's very important for, for pastors to do. And there has to be a lot of healing because there's so many people who've had abortions and have had affairs that they, that they need that healing because otherwise they can't step out of that sin. And then uh, with, with parents, they have to be honest. Uh, they they might have had troubles themselves, but... You know, that was then. I mean, just like when I when I started to drive, gasoline was 50 cents a gallon. Mm -hmm. Right now it's three-something a gallon. So so what I did or didn't do then is one issue, but I should always try to do the best for my child and, and have them lead, lead a good, pure life. Mm -hmm. And then third, on the school end of it, um, I really think schools need to teach, you know, the subjects. Um, uh, it's amazing over the like years, what? like, like, like what? math, and okay. history, <laughs> and, and so what uh, happened to the sex thing? Yeah, right. Well, I, 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 do do? I honestly what, what think, do? Do you think I actually don't think it should be taught in schools. No, okay. um, no so, I, so what do we do? I mean, you've got all these other outside entities that are pressing, if you will. Well, I, 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 I think if you train children well with the subjects, if they have a good sense of history, if they know how to read well, write well, and everything, then I think they're going to be more apt to make good decisions on their own. And right now, there's such a dumbing down of kids um, and then they're just trying to make them into um, addicts of all sorts and into uh, to a bunch of little selfish entities and where when a child gets educated they're going to get uh, a lot of self-respect. I have a letter. And a lot of times that's the problem with Portland Public Schools. It is. Well I have a letter from a little girl kids here. Kids getting who, educated. Who, it is and she uh, <laughs> she mentioned how she. Sorry, we gotta, I've got to make sure we get Lori I know. In uh, she just mentioned how um, now, who is this now? This was a little girl who wrote okay. me at once, right. and she wrote, uh, Now I can say my multiplication tables as fast as my name and much more for once I'm proud of myself. Hmm. So again, uh, you know, when you, when you go in to get a car fixed, you know, you go in to get the car fixed. Uh, people send their children to schools so they learn these academic subjects. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I guess if a parent is that much into Planned Parenthood, well, then they should do that on their own. But right now, just... Just let the schools teach their subjects that okay. they've taught for years. Lori, what do you what do you suggest? Well, I think I mean sex education is not going to go away. Right. Um, and I have my own feelings about that, but um, it's really important that parents and guardians understand there's local control when it comes to this. And even though you know there's health, we now have a, a law K through 12 comprehensive sex education. How that looks and what curriculum is chosen is determined at the local level. Uh, there's a lot of intimidation around that because parents will often hear um, that it's, we've got to be in compliance with the law. What does that mean? Or it's got to be medically accurate curriculum that we use. Uh, my suggestion to parents at the local level is to go in and ask to look at the curriculum, the supplementals, the links, the top program, whatever. I mean, what kind of um, guest speakers are coming in. Look at that and ask lots of questions. You do not have to be an expert in all this. I'm not an expert in all mm -hmm. this. And it's the job of the school to, to justify why they're providing these type of, these type of subjects mm -hmm. that are going to be mm -hmm. discussed. So sex education, it's, it's, it's in place at the schools, but it's, a local decision on how it's taught and what is used. So it's really important uh, that parents ask questions. Once they see the curriculum um, and have some concerns and maybe they don't know what to do about that, mm -hmm. 
I want to plug our website. Okay. Um, parents, it's a long website. Parents' Rights in Education. Excuse me, I can't even say it. Parents' Rights in Ed. Dot WordPress. Dot com. Mm -hmm. Parents' Rights in Ed. Dot WordPress. Dot com. And there's lots of suggestions, very practical things uh, that a parent could do tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have to be a huge thing. It just could be one little thing. You go and you you keep at it. Um, you can't be an expert in everything, but <clears throat> keep your ears ears alerted to anything related to to health, to to you know, of course, sex education, um, bullying curriculum some, can sometimes sometimes be a little bit mm -hmm. um, if we kind of watch that. So there's a lot of things they can do. Um, but don't get paralyzed. Mm -hmm. We as a group, even when we are digesting all of this information, it can be very daunting. But the worst thing for a parent to do is nothing because you have the freedom, you have you have rights. So get to know your rights and have those on our website. Mm -hmm. And and that will give you some power to go, you know what, I don't totally understand this, but tell us why are you using this curriculum? You know, or why are why are my kids learning about this or discussing this with their peers? Um well, tell me this, any, you know, it seems as though this Planned Parenthood situation is pretty entrenched within mm -hmm. the system across the board here mm -hmm. around the state. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what say our governor now? He is the superintendent of schools. I mean, what does he, uh, anyone can, can oh, uh, comment he, on that? Unfortunately, he's very much in favor of Planned Parenthood, too. He so. is very. Right. But, you know, um, you know, you get you get back to Dr., uh, Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King is that who would have thought that the movement to, to get – you know, rights, you know, back in the 50s would have started in the Deep South, and it did. So I, I'm going to go back to what his niece said. I really think that Portland is ground zero to to really cleaning up a lot of the porn in the country, for cleaning up a lot of the smut, uh, and to respecting life in the womb. So I think people just have to stand up and say, hey, schools, you know, t teach the subject. You know, once you teach math, you, and once you teach you know, the children math and reading well, you know, then maybe we'll talk about other things. Well, but. you know, we're constantly making this mm -hmm. point about this country, about the government of mm -hmm. the people, by yes. the people, and for the people, mm -hmm. and we're paying the bills. Yes. And you would think that, one, they would have a committee of some sort. I don't know who basically signs off on this mm -hmm. stuff, but the fact of the matter is parents should be aware. They should right. be made aware. You know, I can remember assemblies, if you will, when, when issues like this would come up where they would bring the parents in, involved, mm -hmm. and and educate mm -hmm. them about and tell them what they needed to do, mm -hmm. uh, recognizing, especially now during these times here. Yeah, right well, now. parents have to be pushy. Uh, uh, we've, we've been working, I've, I've worked with Lori's group too. We were, uh, we had a really push in districts. I mean, uh, most, uh, for example, a lot of parents have asked for the curriculum at Portland, haven't been given it. And Tiger, it was the same thing. So, um, which and I by think law, by law you are supposed to be able to see the, me, the curriculum the before curriculum, right. and during instruction. Is that, is that happening now? No. Uh, well, it's the law, so parents need. It, to it's it's very to difficult. Know. I mean, and I think that speaks millions. It's like, wait, wait. If this program is so good, schools, you know, Miss Miss or Mister Superintendent of whatever district, is then well, why can't you release it? You know, mm -hmm. and for Portland Public Schools in Salem, if, if Planned Parenthood is so great. Why don't they put on the website? We are yeah. partnering with Planned Parenthood. Yeah. They, they disguise it under top. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know. Well, like I said, we, yeah. we've got, as you know, mm -hmm. we're right into the political area at this point in time, and mm -hmm. and we've got uh, well, uh, well, our present governor Kitts Hopper is mm -hmm. going to be running again, mm -hmm. and uh, this is a major concern. He has taken on, if you will, the superintendent of the schools yes. across the board and we, healthcare so. and healthcare, the whole nine yards. So, in mm -hmm. all due respect, hey, the buck stops there, mm -hmm. and hopefully that will be part of the debates. And I would hope mm -hmm. that. All the folks who are running for, for governor will bring this issue to the table right. because it's a major concern. And the other reason why is because it's a very powerful group. Parent, when I, when I look at the billion-dollar right. operation, they've got a lot of influence politically, the whole nine yard, and folks naturally trying to figure out how can they continue to work and they could be threatened, unlike the two of you all that's sitting out there basically jeopardizing your job. Gloria, you're going to skip your job, right? <laughs> huh? I mean, what are you going to do? I'm not sure. Huh? So... Are you going to fight this thing? Oh, of course I'll fight it. Yeah, I think okay. I think it's important to to meet evil with the truth, and and you always have to do that. And I think the truth will will come out of, with the connections of Planned Parenthood with with the people in the school district. I just wanted to say that um, uh, Brad Victor again, the sexuality specialist at Oregon Department of Education, says said I was at a a conference. 
it only takes a couple parents to really cause a district to pull back on some of this curriculum that they're really? choosing. Mm -hmm. So a it just takes, parents, just, just a takes a few parents right. to, to, to bring attention to it, and then they'll pull back on it. So parents hold a lot more cards than they think. Right, right, right. And, and you just need some help to know what cards are out there for them to use, when should I use these cards, and that's where we come along to, to help you because, it's again, it can be overwhelming for well, parents. Well, Lori... They, this is this is a great. I mean, it's a good point that you make because normally, mm -hmm. just for people going to be knocking on your doors, folks. I mean, folks want to want running for office. They want to get elected. Elect, throw it out on the table. That's right. Call your governor. Call your senator. Call them all, mm -hmm. for that matter, and tell them that you've got a concern. Because if you don't do something about it, in all due respect, you're going to have issues with, with your own family. And I, because we all have concerns about our own kids and whatever, we right. want them to be successful. All of us want them to be successful. But these are some, some trying times. And, mm -hmm. and I guess the other point I would make is that, um, uh, as you know, this is ground zero. It's, it's mm -hmm. going to be tough. It's going to be tough here in, the, in this Portland metropolitan area. Mm -hmm. And I would hope that maybe the Oregonians might consider moving to Bend, maybe balancing off a bit. <laughs> because otherwise, they're, they're, being un, they're under pressure. But the fact of the matter is they're trying to maintain. So maybe they might consider putting the Oregonian in the, in the Bend area. Mm -hmm. But this has been very, very interesting. Thank, Thank you, you very much, Lori. Oh, well, thank thank you. you, Bill, as usual. And maybe we can visit, revisit this issue again. Sure. And for those of you who are who are going to be celebrating Dr. King's Day, I would hope that you would do something similar. Get to get your neighbors together and and talk about something that could better your way of life, and especially for the kids. Okay. So with that, hey, have a good, happy holiday, and also enjoy the time and spend the time educating yourself during these during these festive times doing Dr. King. Okay. And all of us in all due can be champions. Again, thank you very much for being with us. Thanks again, folks. Thank you. I'll see you next time around, and happy holidays to all of you.